Welcome again to Philip Scop, and this week we're going to look at the genus Protea. The genus Protea is naturally in the family Proteaceae, and it doesn't really need much of an introduction. Most people, even those who don't really know Fainbos, can recognise a Protea flower as these involucral bracts surrounding a central mass of individual flowers. But what is it that defines the genus Protea? Well, you have to look inside at the individual flowers to understand that. So look within any individual Protea flower head and you'll find that it's got lots and lots of individual flowers within that flower head. The bits, the petals, so-called petals on the outside, are actually the involucral bracts which protect the actual flowers in the middle. And each flower is made up of four periant segments, but in Protea they are fused, or at least three of them are fused together. So you get two separate parts. You get one periant segment dividing off with just a single part, and then the other three are fused on the other side into a larger periant segment. And both those periant segments recoil quite early on as the flower head opens, so that all you get left is this pollen presenter with the pollen stuck to it and the style head on the top. And then at the bottom you see what will become the fluffy seeds containing the ovary at the base. But what about the species? Well again, many of the species people can recognise instantly by just the general faces of the plant and you don't necessarily need to know the diagnostic characters. But it's helpful because for some species there are often close relatives and just identifying how you separate out those closely related species can be useful to understand. So we're going to look at some of the species of Protea today and look at some of the characters that define those particular species separate from the rest. Protea repens is probably the commonest and most widespread of the Cape Proteas found as far east as Port Elizabeth, as far north as the Cedarberg. And it is quite common wherever it is found too, often forming large stands and dominating the Fainbos in those areas. A normal sized bush will be about one and a half to two metres, but if the Fainbos hasn't burnt for a while, it can grow to three, four metres tall and as wide. The flowers are usually pink with a bit of white, or, as in this case, can be all white. The, the variation in the colour is often variable depending on the population. So at Phillips Cop, we have a lot of white coloured Protea repens, although there are some pink and white ones in the population as well. But in other parts of the Cape, maybe at higher altitudes further to the east, pink forms dominate, or even some deep red forms of the species. It is easy to distinguish from other similar species because it is quite hairless. So the leaves don't have hairs, the stems don't have hairs, even the bracts around the flowers are hairless. Uh, but they do have this rather sticky uh, coating to the involucral bracts, uh, which can be quite resinous, and that helps to uh, identify the species as well. The common name uh, is Psychobossi, or the true sugar bush, and it gets this name because of the copious amounts of nectar that are found within the flower head. It will vary depending on where the plant is uh, growing and the conditions around it, how much moisture is under the ground, how much moisture in the air. But very often you can put your finger 
into the flower head. Just be careful of bees also being in there and they will come out with a beautiful sugary nectar on your finger. This used to be made uh, into a syrup um, but it required a lot of flower heads to be collected to even get a small amount of syrup and so is not done these days. The King Protea needs no introduction. It's the national flower of South Africa and the largest flower head of all the Protea species, some 30 centimetres across the diameter. Its Latin name is Protea sinoroides. Sinoroides means like the genus Sinara, and Sinara are the globe artichokes. So the early botanists, when they received these strange flower heads from the Cape, they thought they were reminiscent of a globe artichoke flower head. Of course, there's no uh, relationship between globe artichokes, which are in the daisy family, and these beautiful members of the Protea family. But Protea sinoroides is distinctive, not just because of its large flower heads, but also because of the leaves. And you can see that these leaves are on long, thin stalks before they widen out into a broad uh, end. So the whole leaf is a bit like a spoon. There's lots of spoons up the stems. This means that you can recognise Proteus sinoroides, even if it's not in flower. It's a very distinctive species. The plants are re-sprouters, which mean that they often form quite uh, large clumps of stems. They often don't get very tall, but they do form quite wide bushes and persist from one fire to the next. The species is very widespread throughout the Cape and not surprisingly it's exceptionally variable as well across its range. We get a lot of white forms here like this one but you also obviously get the common red form and it comes almost a deep crimson in some parts of its range. The leaf shape also varies from this very broad spoon shape to a lot thinner as well, but that distinctive petiole is there so you can always recognise Protea sinoroides. Here we have Protea lepidocarpodendron, one of the bearded Proteas because of those lovely black hairs on the tips of the involucral bracts. It is a species endemic to the southwestern Cape, quite common on the Cape Peninsula, but reaching the eastern edge of its range here in the Clane River Mountains. It is uh, a species that's often found on shale bands, often south facing, a bit of extra moisture and nutrients in the soil. It's easy to identify because of those black hairs on the tips of the involucral bracts and the narrow cylindrical inflorescence. A very similar species, Protea nerifolia, but it is uh, not found or should not be found in the Clane River Mountains. However, it is sometimes found here because it's been planted and escaped. Protea lepidocarpodendron comes in both pink and white forms. The white form is commoner in, on the Cape Peninsula and to the west, but here we have about an equal mix of pink and white, and hence it's actually easier to confuse with Protea nerifolia here, because nerifolia is normally pink, and the pink forms of lepidocarpodendron can look very similar to it. Protea lepidocarpodendron is a bit of a mouthful of a name. The, the name comes from a Greek, lepido is scale, carpa is fruit, and dendron is tree. So it means scaly fruited tree, because the, the inflorescence when it dries holds the seeds in there. It was one of the first proteas to be discovered, and they considered that these were the scaly fruits of the bush. Protea nerifolia 
is a widespread species of the Southern Cape Mountains, but it shouldn't actually be found here in the Clane River Mountains. It has been planted in farms on the lower slopes for its excellent cut flowers, but unfortunately some of those plants, the seeds of them have escaped into the Fainbos and it's now actually invading the lower slopes of the Clane River Mountains. This is especially prevalent as you drive along the R43 near the lagoon. You can see the plants creeping up into the mountains. It also uh, is a problem because it actually hybridizes with some of the species that are supposed to be here. So it can cross with Protea lepidocarpodendron, which, to which it's very closely related, and even Protea longifolia hybrids have been found here. There are a number of species of Protea uh, which have been planted for cut flowers outside their natural range, um, but this is probably the, the worst at invading the Fainbos here. So although the plants are indigenous to South Africa, they're actually alien in this area. So here we have Protea lepidocarpodendron with its narrow leaves, its nice cylindrical flower head, smaller than Protea nerifolia with a more sort of vase shaped flower head and broader leaves to it. But the key difference is in these hairs beneath the tip of the involucral bract. You can see in Protea lepidocarpodendron these hairs are black, whereas in Protea nerifolia, where it's got a fringe of black hairs, the hairs below are white. So Protea lepidocarpodendron, with its black hairs below, the on the tip of the inflorescence and Protea nerifolia with whitish hairs just below the tip of the involucral bracts. Here we have Protea speciosa, one of the unusual bearded Proteas in that it re-sprouts from a big underground root. So it forms these low bushes with many stems arising from the base and none of the stems ever get particularly large. They often flower and then once they finish flowering that particular shoot generally dies off. So you get this rather untidy plant with several short stems and old stems in amongst it. But because of the thick root underground, it can survive fire when it comes through and then it re-sprouts. So many of these plants can be really quite old. You can just see the bud of a new flower coming, even when it's got a little way more to go, but even when fully grown it's, it doesn't look that different. It doesn't open greatly once it's uh, in flower. It continues as this sort of ovoid shape, even in bloom, with a narrow top and these dense beards almost closing the entrance. It's quite a widespread species in the southwestern Cape, but it's never really very common, and you usually find it as just an isolated plant here or there on the mid to upper slopes of the mountains. So here at Philipscop we have about three plants of it and along the mountain range you'll just find the odd scattered plant and not find others. But that, because it's so long lived, its uh, number of specimens that it has is not so critical because it can survive from one fire to the next. Here we have Protea longifolia. It's a very easy species to recognise thanks to that lovely black hairy centre to the flower. The black hairs are not 
the same as when you see a bearded protea. In a bearded protea, the black hairs are on the involucral bracts at the tips. But here in Protea longifolia, the black hairs are actually formed by the hairs on the individual flowers in the middle. The involucral bracts on Protea longifolia are actually almost hairless. So it is closer to Protea repens in that respect. Protea longifolia is a, a common species of the Overberg down to Agullus, but it is quite threatened because it likes the lowland clay soils, which are often developed or under threat from aliens. The name longifolia is a reference to the leaves, which are not especially long, but they are quite narrow and so the length of them is accentuated. They form rather untidy bushes. The stems are often quite lax, uh, rather floppy, and the branching comes out irregularly. And they aren't very long-lived plants, generally. They'll, they'll survive for about five to ten years, but the branches are weak, and eventually the surrounding boss overtops them and crowds them out. But while they flower, they are a beautiful plant. While most species of Protea are recognised by their beautiful flowers, Protea cordata is actually best known from its leaves. And that's partly because the leaves are very distinctive, but also the flowers are incredibly insignificant. So cordata means heart-shaped, and you can see here that the leaf is very heart-shaped. So it produces these little tufts of small stems that come out of the ground, not very long, at most half a metre, sometimes a bit more, and up the stem they have these heart-shaped leaves attached to the stem and then the stem angles at the next point. So it's very easy to identify this species. There's no other species that you can really confuse it with. The flowers themselves are tucked down right at the base of the stem. Here you can see the buds of this year's flowers appearing. You have to cut right down to the base of a plant to find them and they are covered in these dark brown involucral bracts. Even once the flowers open they're not much more spectacular. The florets in the middle are this dark maroon colour and they only sort of open a little way. Just enough for the mice to get in but doesn't really produce any display for those looking on from above. Protea cordata isn't an uncommon species, but you often have to look for it carefully in amongst the other plants because it grows in the understory of proteas and leucodendrons. It particularly likes the shale bands that you find in the Cape Mountains where there's that bit of extra nutrients in the soil. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at some of these spectacular plants today. They are many people's favourite plants within the Fainbos and not um, too surprising at that. But hopefully we've given you an appreciation of not just the genus but the variation within the genus and to be able to look at protea flowers in a new light. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again on another walk in the Fainbos.